Hello friends, JT Tapius with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan and if this is your first time on my channel, I'd love to encourage you to hit the bell notification so that every time we release a new video, you my friend will be the first one to know. I enjoy speaking about things that edify the mind, the body and the spirit from a Christian perspective. Today we're going to be speaking about four easy ways to lose weight. Ready? Let's go! All right, my friends, I have to break it to you. 90% of your success at the gym and physically are going to come through proper nutrition. The question then is, JT, can I do this any other way? Can I run? Can I bike? Can I jog? Can I do any physical activity besides starving? And the answer to that is yes. There are many, many, many ways to lose weight. You can run it away. You can starve it away. You can fast it away. You can purge it away. But the truth of the matter is that the most sustainable way to actually decrease body fat percentages and lose unwanted weight and more importantly be able to sustain it is through proper nutrition. And my friends, starvation is not a good plan and neither is slaving over the gym or running or biking or doing all those things because the truth is you'll only be able to maintain that for so long. So 90% of your success will come through proper nutrition and that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to give you four easy tricks that are going to help you to lose weight and decrease that unwanted body fat. Number one, the fad diet industry is a $71 million industry. That's right. $71 million are produced by fad diets and I don't want to say any names but you know the typical foes. And those diets are intended to basically help people through these sprint strategies, meaning that you lose a ton of weight up front, but you're not able to sustain it long term. And of course, people get very frustrated with this idea. And so the cycle looks like this. You go on one of these fad diets, you restrict calories, you create hormonal imbalances or deficiencies because at the end of the day, weight loss is a hormonal shift of five basic hormones and these deficiencies occur, you're starving, at this point desperation kicks in and most people end up quitting because no one likes to hurt for a long time. No one likes to hurt, period. But if you have to do it for a long time and they're messing with your food, most people can't sustain that and they end up quitting on these diets. There's three dynamics to weight loss and hopefully this comes as good news to you because most people think that losing weight is a mystical event. Okay, I hear it all. I hear people say, I'm big bone, I'm from the Midwest, my dad and my mom were obese and therefore I'm destined to be obese. I'm never going to lose weight. This is not going to work for me. I've tried it all. I've heard it all. And my friends, I am, uh, if I had a penny for every single one of those comments, I'd be a multimillionaire because this is what you hear from people uh, when they've tried a ton of things and truly what they're voicing is their frustration because they really have tried hard and they've, they've got on this, these plans and they just haven't worked. I'm here to tell you that weight loss has three dynamics and this should be really good news for you because it tells you that you have control. Weight loss is a mathematical equation. Calories in, calories out. The three dynamics look like this. Number one, calorie deficit. You need to be in a deficit in order to lose weight. So a deficit simply says, simply says that you burn more calories than you actually bring in and therefore you are in a deficit. Calorie balance says that you bring in sufficient calories to sustain your current weight and calorie surplus is when you eat a surplus of calories and you actually gain weight, right? We need to be in a deficit in order to lose weight. And so I'm going to teach you how to do that in four easy ways so that you can not only do that quickly, but so that you can sustain it. Number one, fibrous carbs are your vegetables, your salads, your veggies are what we call your phytonutrients. Okay. These are water based carbohydrates. These are your green beans, your asparagus, your kale, all of the green leafy veggies. And if you're bringing these in a cool quality of fibrous carbs is that they don't spike as much insulin as the starchy carbohydrates like the rice, the pastas, the breads, the legumes in the forms of beans, lentils, garbanzos, all those are what we call high insulogenic foods. So we want to cut those out for a period of time. Now hear me out. I said a period of time, not forever. We don't believe food is bad. We're just eating in the direction of the thing that we're looking to do. In this particular case, you're, lose, you're looking to lose weight, decrease body fat percentages. And so we're going to do that the most efficient way by 
adding fibrous carbs and eliminating the starchy carbohydrates. Fibrous carbs, two to four fifths of green leafy veggies. Any green leafy veggie is great. Any vegetable is good, but I prefer the green leafy veggies. Salads are also a great way to go about incorporating uh, fibrous carbs versus your starchy carbs. Salads, uh, things like lettuce and, and things of that nature have uh, a very, very low caloric uh, intake. And so uh, you're not really causing a lot of spike in your insulin. And so this is also a great strategy. That in combination of number two, which is six to eight ounces of protein. Protein is great inside of a diet because you can get away with six to eight ounces per plate. That's a pretty big portion of protein. And the beautiful thing about protein is that protein doesn't spike a ton of insulin. Therefore, you feel full, you feel satiated, and uh, you, you don't walk away from the breakfast, lunch, or dinner table thinking, oh my God, I'm hungry, or anything like that. You feel very, very satisfied with six to eight ounces of lean protein. Number three, you want healthy fats. If you don't eat fats, you will feel lethargic and you will feel like you have the carb flu. Remember that we want to start switching fuel systems and when you're used to eating breads and rice and pastas and things of that nature, your body is running on glucose. What we want to do is we want to shift fuel systems and start actually burning fat. So we want to bring in some healthy fats like olive oil, coconut oil, avocados. Basically your fats are in dressings, okay? no more than two to three tablespoons per day of fats. Here's why you already have fat percentages in your proteins. And, and so we are taking care of fat wise with three tablespoons a day. Number four, we are going to walk three days a week. My friend, this is one of my favorite ninja tricks. And I'm here to tell you that this is possibly one of the strategies that I get the most resistance on because people like to suffer. In other words, people think they need to suffer, they need to sweat, they need to hurt, they need to do the hard thing if it's gonna work, right? Nothing can be further from the truth. A brisk walk where you can maintain, maintain a conversation is more than enough three days a week on an empty stomach. Obviously, if you have any kind of health condition, please consult your doctor before you do any kind of physical activity. But if you do this as soon as you wake up, what you're going to do is you're going to piggyback off of six to eight hours of sleep, meaning you've been fasting. And that's basically going to help you get into a deficit quicker. You're going to go into those substracts. In other words, some of the calories that you ate the night before, and it creates this cascade uh, where you are in a deficit and inevitably throughout the day, you may make some mistakes in the form of fats. Maybe you're eyeballing fats and you go a little over, but because you started with a 45 minute to an hour walk where maybe depending on your pace, depending on your heart rate, you burned four to 500 calories, that walk on an empty stomach will catch that mistake and you will continue to be in a deficit and you'll continue to move forward. My friends, those are the four easy ways on how to lose weight. Now, I want to say this. This is a sprint strategy. This is not something that I would recommend you stay on forever. This is why inside of our Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan, we have three phases in where we teach people a sprint, a midway, and then sustain a sustainability phase where they're actually able to, to maintain this for the rest of their lives. So this is a sprint strategy. The title of this video was how to lose weight in four easy steps. I gave you that. Remember, number one is fibrous carbs. Number two is six to eight ounces of protein. Number three is healthy fats, two to three tablespoons of healthy fats. Number four, walking three days a week for a minimum of 45 minutes on an empty stomach. My friend, if you do those four things consistently for at least six weeks, you're going to see some massive, massive results. Guys, my name is JT Tapias with the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, would you hit the bell notification so that any time that we release a new video, you will be the first one to know. JT Tapias, professional fitness life coach. I hope you enjoyed that. I will see you soon. Ciao, ciao.